Hey guys, Andrew here from MCAS Self Prep. Just want to give you a quick introduction to the video you're about to see. It comes from my intro session, which is what I have all of my students watch before they start studying for the MCAT. Um, I've worked with you know, hundreds of students preparing for this exam, and I've noticed certain common mistakes that they either make towards the beginning of their studying that put them on the wrong path, or certain habits that they just continue throughout their entire studying that lead to a less optimal MCAT score. So the intro session is my chance to really tell you, you know, how you, how you should study for this exam, some common mistakes that you should avoid, and how to really get started on the right foot and stay on the right track towards a great MCAT score. So, so if you enjoyed this video, definitely head over to MCATSelfPrep.com to watch my full intro session. And once you watch my intro session, you'll be all ready to jump into your MCAT studying, and you'll definitely enjoy using my free MCAT prep course. I wish you the best of luck in your MCAT studying, and please feel free to reach out anytime. I'm here to help. First of all, an effective MCAT study plan is simple. With all of the study resources available out there, it can be easy to get overwhelmed. I've seen too many students overcomplicate their study plans with too many low yield study resources. Instead, I recommend building your studying around just a few of the best study resources out there, specifically resources produced by the people who wrote the test, the AAMC. The AAMC's practice question bundle and the Khan Academy video collection produced in partnership with the AAMC should form the foundation of your MCAT studying. Content review books such as the Kaplan or Princeton seven book series and other free YouTube videos can also support this foundation as needed, but remember to keep your focus on the very best resources, those produced by the AAMC. As previously mentioned, these resources are fully integrated into our free MCAT prep course. Truly, the goal of our free e-course is to help you stay organized while keeping you focused on the very most important MCAT study resources. Using our free e-course as the base of your studying will allow you to make your study plan powerful and simple. Secondly, your study plan should be individualized. This means that it needs to meet your needs and not someone else's. Now, how many of you have searched online and encountered study plans posted by other students, such as a three-month study plan or a 100-day study plan. Yeah, it looks like Madeline has, Anastasia has. Yeah, a lot of you have seen these. And yeah, if you search online, you can find tons of people who are willing to share their MCAT study plan with you. They may even premise it by saying something like, if you just follow my game plan, you'll get a 520 like me. Don't fall for this. The study plan may have worked for that extremely unique individual, but it likely won't work for you. Why? Because you both have totally unique needs. You should also be careful of structured MCAT courses out there that have every student, no matter their background, follow the exact same program. What you study and how you study should be custom to you and your unique situation. You see, you are a unique individual with unique strengths and weaknesses, and your study plan should reflect that. Instead of following someone else's study plan or blindly following one of the mainstream prep courses out there, you will have the greatest chance at MCAT success if you follow an MCAT study plan catered to your specific needs. There are several key factors that should influence how you should customize your study plan. The first and most important factor is your score on a diagnostic exam. If you are starting at a 482, you should certainly plan on spending more hours studying for the MCAT than someone who is starting at a 509. Additionally, you need to consider your goal MCAT score. If you are just a few points away from your goal, you will not need to invest as much as if you are 20 points away from your goal. Other factors to keep in mind include your GPA, whether English is your first language, your academic history, and your outside commitments. What sets my advice apart from the other voices out there on the internet is that my guidance is not just based on my experience scoring high on the MCAT, but it is informed by my experiences working with hundreds of very unique pre-meds. I've worked with students who scored a 510 and students who scored a 480 on their diagnostic exam. I've worked with students simply aiming to break the 500 barrier and students aiming to score above a 520. Students with a 3.0 GPA, English as not just a second, but a third language, students who graduated 10 plus years ago, and students who are parents with multiple children. Through my experience helping this variety of students achieve MCAT success, 
I've gained a unique perspective regarding what it takes for unique individuals to succeed on this test. For instance, when I meet a student who has a 4.0 GPA and scored a 510 on their diagnostic exam, I will likely provide them with a jet streamed game plan. On the other hand, when I work with a student who has a 3.4 GPA, scored 484 on their diagnostic exam, and has English as a second language, I will likely provide them with a radically different and much heftier game plan. I am baffled that other programs would give these two students the same exact study plan when they both have completely different needs. I carefully account for all of these factors and more in my Create Your Own Study Plan course, which comes with the basic pro plan for just $9. It walks you through taking a diagnostic exam and then using your results to create a customized study plan using our study plan spreadsheet. It walks you through the exact same steps that I use to help my private tutoring students create their own custom game plans. Students especially love how it works hand in hand with our free e-course, telling you exactly what to accomplish during each lesson of each content module in order to achieve your exact MCAT goal. For instance, if you end up scoring just two points below your goal score in the behavioral sciences section of your diagnostic exam, I may only recommend for you to watch just the Khan Academy videos for the lessons in that module, allowing you to work through this module very quickly. Additionally, if you end up scoring eight points below your goal score in the chemistry physics section of your diagnostic exam, I may recommend that you watch all the videos from the video playlists and read the Kaplan and Princeton reading assignments. You see, the way you study each topic should depend on your needs, and the Create Your Own Study Plan course helps you achieve this. The next essential element of an effective study plan is that the plan be adequate. The MCAT is a beast of a test, and studying for the MCAT goes against the popular get rich quick or lose 10 pounds in five days advertisements that surround us. Yes, there are people on the internet who will tell you that they got a 520 after studying for just three weeks, and there are countless three month study plans floating around out there. But remember that these are the exception and not the rule. Following these streamlined study plans may work for exceptionally rare and gifted students, but it will likely not work for you. So how long should you study for the MCAT? Go ahead and type into the chat how long you think the typical student should study for the MCAT before taking it. I'm seeing Sarah saying five months, six months, three to six months. Someone says a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Thanks for your responses here, guys. And one thing I'm immediately noticing about most of your responses is that they are focused on time periods, such as weeks or months, and not quantities of time, such as hours. And this is very common. I get asked all the time, hey, Andrew, do you think I can be ready for my test date in three months? Or, hey, Andrew, do you think I can achieve a 520 by this date? And while it is very important to understand your timeline so that you know when to schedule your test date, before thinking about your schedule, you need to think about the quantity of time you are going to invest into your MCAT studying overall. This is because three months for one student is completely different than three months for another. For one student, three months might entail 60 hours of full-time MCAT studying per week, while for another, it might include just 10 hours of MCAT studying per week in between classes and work. For this reason, thinking in terms of weeks or months will not give you the best idea in terms of the amount of time you need to invest into this exam. Instead, I recommend determining the total number of hours you personally need to study in order to achieve your goal score, and then mapping those study hours into a timeline. This way, you are not focused on how long of a period you are studying for the MCAT, but how much time you are investing into your studying overall, which is a much better determiner of your success. And I believe that the quantity of time a student studies for the MCAT is the number one factor that will determine if they succeed or not. I've seen so many students with great potential fail to succeed because they were unwilling or unable to put in the time required. For this reason, in my Create Your Own Study Plan course, I will use the results from your diagnostic exam in combination with the other important personal factors we previously discussed, to provide you with a careful recommendation regarding 
how many hours you should study for the MCAT before you take it. And my most serious recommendation to you is to actually study the total number of hours for this exam that I will recommend to you in my Create Your Own Study Plan course. The next thing I want to mention is that your study plan needs to be informed. One of the biggest reasons that a student will end up retaking the MCAT is that they didn't carefully track their progress while they were studying the first time around. I've talked to many students who studied using one of the mainstream prep courses only to realize after several months of studying that they hadn't made any improvements. You should be checking your progress every couple of weeks to make sure that what you are doing is working. This is exactly why I strongly encourage you to do the AAMC mini exam at the end of every content module. It allows you to see how and in what ways you are improving before it is too late to change gears. And this brings me to my final essential element of an effective study plan. Your game plan needs to be adaptable. Many students want to map out every single day of studying from now all the way until the day they take the MCAT. They want every detail down on paper, including which videos they will watch, which pages they will read, and which practice problems they will complete each day. I understand this desire. You want to know what you are going to be doing when, but there are several problems with this approach. The primary issue is that life happens. Let's say you get sick a month from now and you are unable to study for an entire week. What happens to your plan then? You can't just shift everything back by a week because then you'd miss your test date. You'd have to start mapping out your game plan all over again. As you can see, this would be very frustrating and time consuming. And I've seen this cause tons of students to simply give up on their game plan altogether. The other main issue with this approach is that your study plan is not focused on your current strengths and weaknesses. What if after six weeks of studying, your score in a certain section isn't improving? What are you going to do about it? Well, once again, you'd have to rewrite your whole plan, not fun. This is another reason why you shouldn't follow someone else's study plan or one of the mainstream courses out there. They don't adjust at all. Instead of having such a rigid plan, my Create Your Own Study Plan course will use the results from your diagnostic exam to help you develop an overall vision and timeline while having you map out your day-to-day -day studying for just the first content module using the study plan spreadsheet. And after you finish that first content module, you'll take your first AAMC mini exam, which acts as another diagnostic exam. The Create Your Own Study Plan course will then help you use your results on that AAMC mini exam to determine which content module to study next and which materials to utilize while studying that module. You will then map out the next few weeks of studying using the study plan spreadsheet. And the cycle continues with you completing a content module, checking your progress using the AAMC mini exam, adjusting your plan for the next content module, and on and on until you've completed all 10 content modules. This way, you will have a study plan that is adaptable and adjusts over time to your changing needs. In summary, to succeed on the MCAT, you need a study plan that is simple and focused on the most important resources, those produced by the AAMC. Your plan should be individualized, taking into account the various factors that describe your unique situation. It should be adequate, including enough study hours to result in your success. Also, it needs to be informed, carefully tracking your progress to ensure your plan is working. And finally, your study plan should be adaptable, changing based on real-time results. As you can tell, my Create Your Own Study Plan course will help you make a study plan that has all five of these essential elements. It walks you through the exact same steps that I used to help my private tutoring students create the study plans that have led many of them to achieve scores in the 100th percentile. Because it comes with the basic pro plan for just $9, almost every student studying on MCATSelfPrep.com will take advantage of it. The fourth key to earning a top MCAT score is to have a high level review system. And it is at this point that I want to discuss 12 tips for taking the best MCAT study notes. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this small snippet from my intro session. If you enjoyed it, definitely head over to MCATSelfPrep.com to watch the full thing and get started on my free MCAT prep course. Um, also, you know, please be sure to subscribe to this channel for more MCAT tips coming your way. And if you have any questions, definitely feel free to comment below and me or one of my elite tutors will be in touch with you soon. Best of luck studying for the MCAT and we'll be in touch.
See you next time, guys.